Well, good afternoon, Convent family and friends, and welcome to this, our 80th church anniversary concert. Our music ministry has put together an awesome, awesome time of praise, and woven into it will be some important elements of our history regarding our pastors and this congregation as God has carried us through. Indeed, we have come this far by faith. So come on and let's worship together. Let's enjoy together this 80th church anniversary musical concert. It's going to be a blessing. Good evening and welcome to the 80th anniversary concert for Convent Avenue Baptist Church. My name is Gregory Hopkins and I have the blessing to be able to serve as Minister of Music at Convent Avenue Church. Many of you who are tuned in are used to seeing me at church, but you see me in my home this time. So thank you for joining us. We hope that you enjoyed this concert. Some of you may remember that years ago, I believe for the 50th anniversary of our church, I wrote a church song, O Convent, Our Convent. Upon the hilltop's graceful height, gray stone against sky blue. There stands a church whose beacon light shines out o'er Harlem's view. A church whose halls so brightly glow with faith's undying flame, where people come to worship God and praise his holy name. O convent, our convent, Thank God for all of the things you've meant. We read God's word and learn to serve God and his creation. Well, that's a blast from the past. Some of you might remember that song. Now, tonight we are celebrating our 80th anniversary, bringing highlight to our pastor, Dr. Jesse T. Williams' theme for the year renewing and rebuilding God's church. Enjoy the concert and thanks for tuning in.
Saunders was a very, very nice young man. He was, he, we, um, my parents, my father was a deacon, and he's the Clark, William Clark, not Leroy Clark, William Clark, and Gertrude Clark, and my, and his sister, which is Tempe Johnson, Annie Tempe Johnson. They drove down to the 10th Street Baptist Church in Camden, New Jersey, and there they interviewed Reverend Saunders. I don't know what they said because I was young. They inter I just rode in the car with them. They came back, and all I know is Reverend Saunders got to be the minister of the church. He was very good. Very everybody loved him. They, you know, it was just one of those beautiful times. You know that we had a minister, and we had somebody. We were, this was in Walker Memorial. This was before a convent. If someone called Reverend Sanders and told him that there was a church on 145th Street in, and Convent Avenue, they were, there was a church they were gonna they want to sell it. So on a Thanksgiving morning. He went up there, that's when we bought, he got the church in February. We marched from 132nd Street from Carnegie Senior to 145th in Carnegie and at the church. Reverend Sanders, when he got there on the step, he backed back and he swirled his can and he said, Woo! We did. We marched up there. We went, we marched in the church. Rep Sanders was such a sweet person. Him and Miss Sanders, what would they were sweet, they were dolls. Mm -hmm. Rep Sanders was such a caring and loving person with the children, we see the children, with the children, and it, it, it was in the corner of adults. Sister Saunders was very, she was quiet, she wasn't outspoken because I imagine the people there weren't as nice as the people are now. But she was very nice, very elegant. When you saw her, you saw elegant. That's what we, that's what I pick it. She was very, she dressed nice. She had a nice air about her, but not a stuck up air. A nice casual talk to everybody. Was anxious, didn't think she was better than anybody. You know, we just loved her. As a little girl, everybody loved her. And everybody wanted to talk to her. And she took time and talked to us. He would come to visit his members. He would tell them, you never know when I'm gonna be ringing your bell. So you be prepared. So one, I remember one Monday, the bell rang, and my mother, my mother was very fussy, very funny, but the house and everything, and the way she was dressed and all. <laughs> the bell rang, and the mother went there. It was Robert Sanders. She said, "Oh, oh, oh Robert Sanders," <laughs> and he said, "I tell you, you never know, because." But he said, you never know when the master's gonna call you. So you never know when I'll be ringing your bell.
God be the glory. Good morning, Deacon Red. It is an honor to work with you and to be selected to share a few golden moments from the M.L. Wilson era, who was the second pastor of the Convent Avenue Baptist Church. The accomplishments of Reverend Wilson are too many to enumerate with the time that we have been allotted. So I'll say this to begin. Reverend M.L. Wilson, or M.L. as he was widely known, loved yes. to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And man, could he preach it. Could he preach it. I remember um, Reverend Wilson as a community man. He lived right here in the community, and you could see him quite often coming up the hill with his robe draped over his arm, going somewhere <laughs> to preach. Yes. He yes. was in demand. Very much. Folks loved Manny L. L. Wilson. Wilson. And it just so happens that me and Deacon Red have been around <laughs> 50 years? Two. 52? <laughs> So we had the honor and the privilege of actually meeting and learning under the pastorship of Reverend Wilson. Mary? Thank you, <laughs> Brother Chadwick, and good morning. good morning. It is such a wonderful opportunity, as Deacon Chadwick stated, to share about Reverend M. L. Wilson. Reverend Wilson, I would describe as a Renaissance man, mm -hmm. a man for all seasons. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I always enjoyed about Reverend Wilson, in addition to his preaching and teaching, was his leadership. Mm -hmm. His leadership style was one whereby he wanted everybody to participate. That's so right. he had a participatory leadership style. Mm -hmm. But I would tell you also that at a church meeting, if you got out of line, he was going to help you to get back in line. That's right. Reverend Wilson was a much sought after preacher, speaker, and an encourager to many here, there, and everywhere. Reverend Wilson was able to involve the Convent Avenue Baptist Church in many community activities. Mm -hmm. And a couple I would uh, give uh, thought to and share with you. One, our first contract was the home attendant program. Mm -hmm. That program helped those persons who were disabled mm -hmm. to have healthy relationships. Someone was there to help them, to take care of them. The second was the Hamilton Grain Senior Citizen mm -hmm. Program. And those programs, Reverend Wilson depended heavily upon two people. One was the uh, James Oliver, mm -hmm. Deacon James Oliver, and the second program was by our beloved Reverend Timothy U. Riles. I remember Tim. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They really worked very, very closely with Reverend Wilson in getting the social service component uh, for us. Mm -hmm. I would also share with you that in the 70s, the uh, late 70s and early 80s, if you were not here by quarter of 11 on a Sunday morning, you didn't have a seat. You would be lined, people would be lined up along, along in the quarters, outside quarters. That's right. The balconies were filled. And you know the other uh, church service that always drew a wonderful attendance was the 
six o'clock all request program. That's right. That was another program. If you were not here by a quarter of six, you didn't make it. Reverend Wilson involved himself with the members every Sunday after the 11 o'clock service. Where did he go? Downstairs That's to right. interface with the people. That's right. Okay, Deacon Chadwick, take it on. You mentioned that uh, Reverend Wilson uh, used to uh, conduct the 6 o'clock and the 11 mm -hmm. and, uh, and the 8 o'clock services, and they were always well attended. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back and take out a little example. There was watch night. Now, for mm -hmm. those of you who don't know what watch night is, that's our pre-New Year's service. And watch night at the Convent Avenue Baptist Church was the place to be. Tell it, tell it. Everybody came to watch night service, whether you were a good Christian or not so good, <laughs> whether you were a good street person or not so good. Everybody came to the watch night service to be on their knees before they proceeded to their New Year's party. And yes. Reverend Wilson was preaching. He was on fire this night. I'll never forget it. And he had such a voice. Let me, let me detail his uh, <laughs> voice just a little. His voice was somewhere between Barry White Isaac Hayes, a touch of MLK, a spot of Obama, a little bit of Clarence P, and of course, a dash of Jesse T. In other words, Reverend Wilson could preach up a storm. And he was preaching this New Year's Eve, and he came to a point, and he looked around the church in his booming voice, and he said, some of you sitting here are going to go straight to hell. <laughs> and the church I, grew quiet for a minute. Did you remember I that? I remember that. Do you remember I that? Remember the that. church grew quiet for a minute before they broke out into the praise, praise and thanksgiving, mm -hmm. introspection, and mm -hmm. repentance. I tell you, Reverend time. Wilson could say anything to us mm -hmm. because we knew mm -hmm. That he loved us. Mm -hmm. Mary? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, Convent Avenue got the name of the church as the beacon on the hill. Mm -hmm. And Reverend Wilson always wanted to make sure <laughs> that we carried out being the beacon. You know, when you think of beacon, you think of the light. Mm -hmm. Yes, Convent was a light. Mm -hmm. Reverend Wilson also started the lay participation. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that the Logan family mm -hmm. uh, was the first family to participate in Family Day. Amen. Mm -hmm. Deacon James, Deacon Mamie, now the Reverend Dr. James B. <laughs> and Rolanda. Mm -hmm. I had the good fortune, 1971, shortly after I became a member, mm -hmm. I had a conversation with Reverend Wilson, and Reverend Wilson said, do you really, you know, you're young and all this, do you think you really want to get involved? Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, sir. And he said, well, when I call you, you better answer That's right. yes, you know. So he did. and. I was the first lay participant to read the scripture. At that time, we were not doing responsive reading. Mm -hmm. And I was so elated that I could tell my father, who was a minister, mm -hmm. that I had read the scripture at this magnificent church under the, under the pastorate of the Reverend Dr. M. L. Wilson. <laughs> well, we were all, we were all proud. That's right. And you know, Lay participation really, really has grown. Reverend Wilson made sure that those who were coming into the ministry, I think about Reverend Dr. Fran Manning, mm -hmm. 
I think about, and I do believe our own Reverend Brenda Price mm -hmm. got her start under uh, Reverend Wilson. But we had, what was her name, who was the first? Sister uh, Darlene but, McGuire. But, yeah, Darlene McGuire mm -hmm. was the first intern from Union Theological That's Seminary. Right. So Reverend Wilson wanted to make sure that all of those who stood at this desk, sacred desk, was prepared. As I said initially, Reverend Wilson was a renaissance man. <laughs> he was ready for every season. <laughs> Deacon Chadwick? Just a little more. Oh. Um, ministries flourished mm -hmm. under Reverend Wilson. Mm -hmm. He knew how to spot talent Mm -hmm. if it was a mile away. Mm -hmm. If you brought a ministry idea to Reverend Wilson, he would call one of his deacons or two of them mm -hmm. and say, I want you to make this happen. And it did happen. And we had some of the earliest ministries uh, in the community 30, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. We had a truck out front giving breast examinations and all kinds of things that we see current today, many of them Reverend Wilson started mm -hmm. years and years ago. He was a visionary. You know, Deacon Chadwick, you speak about the ministries. Don't you remember the ministries came out of the clubs? Mm -hmm. They had the South Carolina Club, the North Carolina Club, the Virginia Club. Mm -hmm. But he said, no, 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 no. These are going to be ministries, and we had to develop a mission. That's right. So he, he, he knew how to get us started. That's right. Okay. I guess we're going to conclude. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of his uh, famous uh, sayings. Mm -hmm. He said that church leadership uh, needs to be radical, mm -hmm. militant, militant, and, and relevant. relevant. Mm -hmm. And he broke it down. Radical to develop the capacity for love, militant to be committed to truth, and relevant to develop the capacity to respond to human needs no matter what. One more thing. In his final days, um, it was heard him say that he's not worried about convent. Mm -hmm because he has two dynamic ministers in the wings. Yes. He had one, Reverend Dr. Lucius Walker, Walker. the late yes. Lucius Walker, Walker. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the Reverend Clarence P. P. Grant. Grant. And of course, the rest is history. history. And his saying, uh, me, me too, too is not, not enough. enough. Act. Act. Me too is not enough. And what that means is don't sit on the sidelines mm -hmm. waiting for everyone else to conduct ministry. True. Get involved yourself. Self. And our current pastor, Reverend Dr. Jesse T., his theme, rebuild, Build, renew, renew, and, and revive, revive, incorporates mm -hmm. that same sentiment, me too is not enough, in order to make his vision come true, we all have, have to, to act. Act. Reverend Wilson, <laughs> me too is not enough. Me too is not enough. Act. Act. Amen. Amen. <laughs> to God be the glory. Amen.
created me a clean heart, oh God. Restore me, transform me. Created me a clean heart, oh God. Change my heart. My name is Deacon Calvin Martin. I will talk about the Reverend Dr. Clarence P. Grant before he arrived at Convent Avenue Baptist Church. He was born in Newport News, Virginia. He was the youngest of five children, three brothers and one sister. His mother, Sydney, preceded him in death, but his father, James, was present, was alive at the time of his death. At a high, as a high school senior, he was elected president of the student body which indicates that his leadership qualities were evident at a very early age. He earned his Bachelor of Arts degree in philosophy from Barrington College in Barrington, Rhode Island. Barrington College was a four-year Christian liberal arts college. He earned his Master's of Divinity degree from Princeton Theological Seminary and his second Master's degree of social work from NYU. Reverend Grant was licensed to preach the gospel in August of 1964 and was ordained in August of 1968. I will now speak on his time at Convent Avenue Baptist Church. Reverend Grant served as our youth and children minister and the minister of Christian education from 1970 to 1982. 
On September 26, 1982, he was installed as a third pastor of the Convent Avenue Baptist Church. Our congregation thought so much of him, they never thought in terms of putting together a search committee. His accomplishments were many. Deacon Lawrence Hudson rehearsed a few of them to you. I would do the same. In 1990, he dedicated 348 Convent Avenue and named it Lorenzo George Pearson Youth Center. For many years, Reverend Grant served as chairman of the board of directors of the M.L. Wilson Boys and Girls Club of Harlem. Additionally, he established the Women and Men's Auxiliary of the club. Their primary function was to generate revenue for the club. Furthermore, he provided space at 425 West 144th Street so that the Boys and Girls Club could operate until they could find a home. He implemented the Harlem Juvenile Diversion Program, a national pilot program that diverted hundreds of thousands of youngsters from the juvenile justice system. He and one of our deacons led the charge to purchase a property on St. Nicholas Avenue, which now housed the neighborhood charter school. Presently, we are receiving more than $13,000 per month per month from that school. At this point, you can see that he was a visionary and a leader extraordinaire. The Reverend Clance P. Grant established Chapel at the Crossroads and the pastor's 1 p.m. Bible study. Chapel at the Crossroads was held in the middle of the week, Wednesday, and in the middle of the day at 12 noon. But I believe that one of his most important accomplishments was the establishment of the John W. Sanders Scholarship Fund. This fund provides financial aid to members of, of our church to further their education. However, some may argue that bringing women onto the board of deacons may be his most important accomplishment. First, he had to persuade the congregation to amend the Constitution in order to bring about this change, and that called for a two-third vote, after which the congregation had to be convinced to vote 18 women onto the board. He is responsible for Convent Avenue Baptist Church having a Stephen ministry, homeless ministry, food pantry, Saturday Children's Fellowship, a monthly leadership council meeting, and prison ministry. He was extremely active in repealing the Rockefeller drug law. Actually, there are many more things I could bring to your attention, but time will not permit. Gone, but never forgotten. I will end with his favorite parting words, carry on. What a wonderful God we serve. I'm Deacon Lawrence Hudson, appointed chairperson of the Board of Christian Mission. This is my testimony on how I come to meet the Reverend Clarence P. Grant. It is amazing what wonders lay in store when observing from afar. It was the fourth Sunday in October in 1987. I was sitting in the upper balcony, worshiping with my family. Reverend Grant was preaching. I do not recall the full essence of his sermon, but he made an illustration to something that happened in Georgia. I am from Georgia. Reverend Grant continued to preach. He mentioned the word Georgia again. I got up from my seat, made my way down from the balcony, down the center aisle of the church, and to Reverend Grant. Waiting at the altar was Deacon James Logan and Deaconess Dorothy Bryant. They counseled me, and thus I'm a member of the Lord's family. A few years later, I personally thank Reverend Grant for leading me and my family to Christ, to which he respond, that's what it's all about, Hudson. To me, Reverend Grant's sermons always pointed out a common interest in church involvement. So I joined the male ushers and the men's fellowship, and later I was ordained to the diaconate ministry. While attending church council, Reverend Grant approached me, stating he would like to meet with me. That meeting never happened, at least not in that form. Reverend Daniel Dupree arranged a meeting with Reverend and Mrs. Grant 
near the pulpit after a 6 p.m. communion service. And in a very few words, Reverend Grant appointed me chair of the Board of Christian Mission in 1990. Reverend Grant and I had very few formal meetings over the years as I served with him. Reverend Grant gave me one directive. Hudson, would you be there for me? To which I respond, yes, I will be there for you. The Board of Christian Mission under Reverend Grant's leadership grew from three ministries in 1983 to 16 core ministries to date. Convent is a mission church. The Lock Carry Foreign Missions receive annual financial support from the membership. As ministries grew in the church, Reverend Grant favored the annual mission fair, where all the ministries would set up tables on the avenue, display their work, and recruit new members. The mission fair now is in its 32nd year. If Reverend Grant's ministry at convent was sustained, nurtured, or endured decades, if by one quote, namely, carry on, in my opinion, evidence is reassuring. He embodied the term carry on. Reverend Grant lived and carried the ministry of Christ as he pastored in this branch of Zion. He would utter those words after having a conversation with one person or a group of members, and as he left, he would say, carry on. But in his quest for his purpose in this mission and ministry in this branch of Zion, the Lord granted these blessings upon his ministry while serving as pastor. The M.L. Wilson walkway connecting the John W. Saunders building and the church completed in the mid-1990s. He carried on. Reverend Grant envisioned and established the Hamilton Grange Senior Center. Reverend Grant carried on. Reverend Grant established the Board of Christian Mission in 1983 with three ministries, now 16. In his call to preaching the gospel in season and out, he was consistent in preaching the 8 a.m and 11 a.m. worship service for over two decades. He was consistent in preaching the first Sunday 6, 6 p.m. communion service, which was a lasting legacy in the Harlem community. In his courage to seek in the Lord's will, 18 deaconesses were elevated to ordained deacons in the Convent Avenue Baptist Church. Reverend Grant carried on. I am forever grateful to Reverend Grant having afforded me the opportunity to serve God's people in this branch of Zion. And with the help of God Almighty, I will carry on, serving the Lord and my Savior and serving God's people. And as Reverend Grant would say, if I was gonna say amen, I would put one right there. What a wonderful God we serve.
church. I greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Deacon Terry McFarlane, and I served as one of the most recent former chair of the diaconate ministry here at Convent Avenue Baptist Church. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. I am humbled to be part of this 80th year anniversary in the life of Convent Avenue Baptist Church. And as I reflect on the history of our past pastors, I am thankful and grateful that God called me to be one of the first deacons to have been ordained by our current pastor, the Reverend Dr. Jesse T. Williams, Jr. And as one of the most recent former chair of the diaconate ministry, I know I left the imprint of being one of the first chair to have led during a pandemic. But convent, God has been so good to us. You see, God is reshaping his church for good. For scripture says, for we know all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And I leave you with this. May the grace, may his grace abound all the more. And as we support the shepherd of this church, the Reverend Dr. Jesse T. Williams, Jr., for such a time as this, and use this opportunity to reset, to pivot from old patterns, and look afresh at the future. Convent, happy 80th anniversary. God bless you. Greetings to my below. Convent Avenue Baptist Church family. The essence or the core building block of the Reverend Dr. Jesse T. Williams is his love for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This core building block is also known as his heart. It is this core building block or his heart, which allows this man of God to teach what is right, to preach what is right, and to live what is right. This core building block makes him into a remarkable family man who cares and provides for his family, makes him into a committed and gifted servant that passes the Convent Avenue Baptist Church, and into an inspiring and thought-provoking community leader. There are numerous examples of Reverend Williams' heart and it's in, it being displayed in his family, the church, or the community. However, time allows me to only share three such examples. First, Reverend Williams is a community leader. Reverend Williams is one of the leading clerics engaged in the New York City Living Wage Movement. This movement advocates for fair wages for all working individuals. If you're working, you should receive a wage that is worthy of your hire. 
a way that allowed you to take care of yourself and your family. Reverend Williams' servant leadership is making a significant difference in the quality of life in the community by helping all workers receive a fair wage for their labor. Reverend Williams, the pastor, everyone remembers and loves our evening community service. It was held every first Sunday at 6 p.m. The ordinance of communion was only being observed by a limited number of members and believers who attended this worship service. Reverend Williams told us that this ordinance should be served by any member or believer in attending any worship service on the first Sunday, whether it was 8 a.m., 11 a.m., or 5.30 p.m. Communion is now celebrated by a greater number of convict families. Reverend William teaching and preaching has made a significant difference in the worship practice and in the lives of our church family. Lastly, Reverend William, the family man. Reverend Williams loves his family. Let us remember Reverend Williams and First Lady Jelaine Williams and their 30th wedding anniversary. They renewed their wedding vows in the celebration of this 30th wedding anniversary and shared this momentous occasion, extraordinary service with the entire church family. What a wonderful and touching ceremony it was. This servant leader, the Reverend Dr. Jesse T. Williams Jr., is an extraordinary family man. On the 80th anniversary, of the Calvin Avenue Baptist Church, we salute the Reverend Dr. Jesse T. Williams, this remarkable community leader, awesome and fantastic pastor, and wonderful family man. We thank God for Reverend Williams, who core building block is based on the solid rock of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
Let's receive our closing benediction, brothers and sisters. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his own glory with exceeding joy. And to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let all of God's people say together, Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, I know that your hearts were touched by that. Mine surely was. A special thank you goes out to our Minister of Music, Dr. Gregory Hopkins, for his leadership and vision in putting this event together. I know that you're going to want to watch this over and over and over again. And so we're thankful that this is going to be a part of the church's history and our records. I know that you will be blessed each and every time you watch it. Share this with somebody because the Convent Avenue Baptist Church indeed has a rich history and a rich legacy and we have come this far by faith. May God bless you and may he keep you in his care.